Hello, everyone. I'm Mayor Kennedy O'Brien of Sarville, and I want to welcome you to Conversations with Kennedy. Uh, my name's Kennedy O'Brien, and I am the mayor of Sarville, New Jersey. Thank you for joining uh, me today in Conversations with Kennedy. Today, I have guest Chief Daniel Plumacher of the Sarville uh, Police Department and Lieutenant Jim Novak, also of the Sarville Police Department. And today, the chief and the lieutenant are going to talk about branding uh uh, a career in the, in the Cerville Police Department and their recruiting efforts. So, Chief, let me turn it over to you. Thanks, Mayor. Happy to join you again today on uh, Conversations with Kennedy. Yeah, so the Cerville Police Department, we, uh, we are actively seeking applicants, um, talking to colleagues around the state and even around the country on the national level. Recruitment is a big issue right now. Uh, everybody's struggling to recruit the best candidates. Uh, the applicant pools have dwindled as to what they used to be years ago. So for that reason, it's becoming more and more competitive for agencies to seek out and obtain and hire the best candidates. So how are we going to do that here in Sable? So we're going to brand ourselves. That's our goal, to really let the community we serve, the residents that we serve, know what the Sable Police has to offer and why the Sable Police Department is such a great organization to work for. So some of the efforts um, include social media use, uh, recruitment fairs, um, all types of different community events where we just get the word out about what we are, what we represent, and what, why you would want to come work here. Like what, what, what is the draw to come work and serve in this community? So uh, Lieutenant James Novak of our community policing unit really spearheads our recruitment pro uh, program. Him and his staff are tasked with attending the various recruitment events, the community events, and they are also tasked with pushing out on social media our brand. So I'll turn it over to Lieutenant Novak real briefly just to speak a little bit about the efforts of what we are doing to get the word out there. Lieutenant. Mr. Mayor, thanks for having me. Chief, thank you. Um, I think the biggest thing that we're doing is uh, social media. Um, I'm, at, I'm of the ge the Facebook generation, I, I guess. I kind of grew up there, but, uh, but we're expanding because we're trying to reach younger people that are starting these careers. We're expanding uh, into TikTok and Instagram and uh, a few other things we're exploring uh, Charlie Teeter in my office and uh, some of the people that work with me are, are doing those things. Um, it's an interesting, an interesting time to try and recruit police officers. Uh, you know, when I got hired, the competition pool w was high, um, and you know everybody wanted to be a cop, and, and we're just not seeing that right now. Um, so you know, so we're out there in the community. We're trying to diversify our our, our department. We want our department to look like the community that they serve. Um, so we are out in all the communities. We actually started a program where we pay for um, a study group. The, when you take a civil service test, there's uh, companies that provide services that mm -hmm. sort of teach you how to take this test and, you know, and, and sort of give you an idea how to study for it. Um, they tend to be expensive, a few hundred dollars, um, up to $1,000 to attend these things. And uh, we, we signed up with uh, Espos uh, Learning Centers, one of the premier law enforcement uh, testing prep courses. Um, they come in, we provide that service free of charge to any any resident of the town who wants to become a cop. Um, we're going to be running that in the next few months. Uh, we're going to have information come out on our social media for that. But this way, it's free. No matter where you live, no matter, you know, as long as you live in Cerebral, but no matter where you live, no matter how much money you make, we want you to be able to have an opportunity to be a Cerebral police officer. So that's one of our programs that we're really uh, pleased with. Uh, we found a fun way to fund that. Um, you know, if people follow us on social media, they'll know I don't have it anymore. But, you know, a lot of our officers had beards over the uh, winter months. Chief Plumacher uh, agreed to uh, relax the beard policy. Um, and officers donated money, at a, you know, to be able to have that beard um, that funded this whole program. And the PBA, uh, Local 98, helped out with that. So it's no cost to the taxpayer. And, and you know, we can really beef up that uh, candidate pool with, with qualified residents. Yeah, so we're excited <coughs> about that. If I could ask... A few questions for the parents of Sarahville. What is the minimum age uh, that a candidate has to be to uh, look for a career in law enforcement? So we are a civil service jurisdiction. So 18 years old. You have to be 18 years old, possess a valid driver's license and a high school um, diploma or a GED certificate. Those okay. are minimum qualifications. And when someone signs up and, and um, they pass the civil service, um, and the, the interview and the vetting process, what is the, it's six months in, in the academy? 
It's approximately six months of academy training. We do utilize a residential academy, the Cape May County Police Academy. We feel that provides uh, some of the best officers and the best training for our officers. And the officers that have attended, they come back and they're very, very qualified. So now, do, do they live at the academy like they went would go to college, or do they commute every day? They will live there Monday to Friday, and they're released on the weekends and Saturday and Sundays are home and back on Monday mornings. And what is the starting salary for um, a police officer in Sarah? So the academy rate of pay for that first approximately six months is uh, around $51,000 a year. Uh, once they graduate the academy, it's called a post academy rate. They would go up to fifty-eight thousand for the fifty-eight, 58 correct? And then year two, they would start at a, a approximately sixty-five thousand dollars. And again, there's opportunities for extra duty work uh, as well for for the officer's income. So a, a young person um, can look forward to a future of financial stability. They could buy a home. They could live the American dream. It's a great opportunity. It really is, Mayor. Serve their community, serve their country. Fabulous, fabulous. Um, what else do you have lined up for the branding uh, of being a servo police officer? So one of the things we definitely want to note is the enrollment period for the civil service test is open now. <laughs> it opened March 1st. Uh, applications can be received at civil services website or also of any of our social media. We have a, a code you can scan, which will bring you right to the civil service page. But you have to sign up between... Um, March 1st and April 1st. It's if, if they called the police department and s said, I'm interested, would they be transferred to somebody who could help them through the process? They'd be transferred to somebody that could help, or they would direct them to the social media sites where, where the, the, the code is so they could scan it, and that would take them directly to the page with all the information regarding the process. Okay. But, but you have a proactive approach to recruitment? Absolutely. Okay. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to to add into, into the um, recruitment and branding part of your jobs? You know, just that uh, we're, we're trying to reach everybody. We're out in the community. We're at every event. We have a, a recruitment team. A lot of our newer officers are there. Um, they they are armed with all the knowledge that uh, that people might, for, to answer questions people might have. Okay. Um, and feel free to approach them. If you see if you see a cerebral cop, we're, we're community-oriented police department. If you see a cerebral cop and you have a question, ask any one of us. Well, since both of you chose this career some time ago, do you have any regrets? None whatsoever, Mayor. Jim, great experience. Just, I just regret getting old. Well, Jim, <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> you don't look old. I would, I would you stay here forever. Uh, with that, I want to thank you for joining uh, this uh, conversation with Kennedy, and look forward to bringing you more.